Good day everyone, my name is Hazel Maybe Sorongon and I will be the assigned reporter to discuss the geology and earth resources. Based on your understanding, what is all about geology and what are earth resources? So before we begin our formal discussion, let's discuss first our learning objectives. Our learning objectives for today's lesson, at the end of the discussion, the learners will be able to define the signs of geology and earth structure, to identify the main natural resources of earth, and to analyze the relationship of geology and natural resources. So let's begin discuss the geology. What is geology? It is also known as geoscience or earth science. It is a study of structure, evolution, and dynamics of the earth and its natural mineral and energy resources. It helps us understand climate change in the past, which may help us predict future scenarios. So in some point, geology looks at some of the most important issues in society today, including energy sources and sustainability, climate change, the impacts of developments on the environment, water management, mineral resources, and natural hazards. And before we discuss the Earth structure, let's discuss first the Earth. The Earth is a third planet from the Sun and the fifth largest planet in the solar system in terms of size and mass. Earth is our home planet, and scientists believe Earth and its moon form around the same time as the rest of the solar system. How old is the Earth? Today, we know the radiometric dating that Earth is about 4.543 billion years old. The Earth's structure is made up of three different layers, the crust, mantle, and core. Crust. It is the outside layer of the Earth and is made up of solid rock, mostly basalt and granite. 98.4% of the Earth's crust consists of oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And there are two types of crust, which are the oceanic crust, which is denser and thinner and mainly composed of basalt. It is composed of mostly mafic igneous rocks that have a slightly lower silicon and oxygen. Next is the continental crust, which is less dense thicker and mainly composed of granite. It is most of the continental crust is felsic rock and feldspar, granite and quartz are all commonly found. The continental crust is high is silicon and oxygen content, which makes up about 60% of its mass. So next is mantle. It is below the crust and is up to 2900 kilometers thick and consists of hot, dense, iron, and magnesium-rich solid rock. So, it is a more ultramafic in composition, meaning it has even more iron and magnesium than mafic rocks and even less silica. Although the mantle has a similar chemical composition, throughout it has layer with different mineral composition and different physical properties. And there are two types of mantle which is the lighted sphere that consists of silicon, iron, and magnesium with other elements like aluminum, sodium, and potassium and also present. So these lighter spheres which constitutes the hard and rigid outer vertical layer of the earth includes the crust and the uppermost mantle. Next is the asthenosphere. It is beneath the lithosphere, it is the asthenosphere. And tiny amounts of melted rock disappears through the otherwise solid asthenosphere make the asthenosphere weak compared to the lithosphere. And lastly is the core. It is the center of the earth and is made up of two parts, the liquid outer core and solid inner core. It is primarily composed of iron with lesser amounts of nickel. And it consists of lighter elements such as sulfur, oxygen, or silicon may also be present and the core is extremely hot. There are two types of core, which is the inner core that composes of an iron-nickel alloy with some other elements and the temperature is estimated to approximately 5,700 kelvins. And next is the outer core that is mostly composed of liquid iron and nickel. It is fluid layer about 2,260 kilometers thick. What is tectonics? It is a scientific study of the deformation of the rocks that make up the earth, crust, and the forces that produce such deformation. And the plate tectonics is the theory that earth outer shell is divided into a large slabs of solid rocks called plates. 
that glide over Earth's mantle, the rocky inner layer above Earth's core. How and where tectonic origin? So it is triggered by the spreading of early continents, then it eventually became a self-sustaining process. And these plates slide slowly across the Earth's surface like wind-driven ice sheets on water, breaking up into smaller pieces in other places, crushing ponderously into each other to create new, more significant land masses, magma. Magma is extremely hot, liquid, and semi-liquid rock located on the Earth's surface. And, like a solid rock, magma is a mixture of minerals. Magma forms from a partial melting of mantle rocks as the rocks move upward or have water added to them and they start to melt a little bit. So, the magma it also contains small amounts of dissolved gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur. The high temperature and pressure under its crust keep magma in its fluid states. And this magma forced up through the cracks forms a new oceanic crust that piles up underwater in mid-ocean ridges. And this is mid-ocean ridges. It is a sea floor mountain system formed by plate tectonics. It has a depth of about 2,600 meters equivalent to 8,500 feet and rises about 2,000 meters and equivalent to 6,600 feet above the deepest portion of an ocean basin and this is located at Atlantic Ocean and these mid-ocean ridges are feature where the seafloor spreading takes place along the divergent plate boundary. And with these mid-ocean ridges are geologically important because they occur along the kind of plate boundary where new ocean floor is created as the plates spread apart. These are the main natural resources which are the oil, coal, natural gas, metals, stone, and sand. And other natural resources are air, sunlight, soil, and water. And animals, birds, fish, and plants are natural resources as well. Because natural resources are used to make food, fuel, and raw materials for the production of goods. And let's discuss the rocks and minerals. So what is minerals? Minerals are building blocks of rocks. It is a pure substance with a specific composition and structure and is naturally occurring in organic solid with a definite chemical composition and an ordered atomic arrangement. So these minerals are naturally occurring in organic substantial elements or compounds with definite chemical composition and a regular internal crystal, crystal structure. It means it is not created by humans or synthetic, it is organic materials such as coal produced by living organisms or biological process are generally not minerals. And how about rocks? Rocks are natural substance composed of solid crystals of different minerals that have been fused together into solid lump, solid collection of mineral grains that grow or become cemented together. So rocks are relative hard, naturally occurring minerals material and it consists of a single mineral or of several minerals that are either tightly compacted or held together by a cement-like mineral matrix. So this is the process of the rock cycle. The rock cycle is a concept used to explain how the three basic rock types are related and how earth process over geologic time change a rock from one type into another. So these are the um, representation on how the rock cycle so it undergo with the weathering or erosion and subduction and heat pressure and melting. And these are the three types of rocks. Igneous rocks which is formed when hot, molten rock crystallizes and solidifies. The igneous form of rocks does not include any fossil deposits and most igneous forms includes more than one mineral deposit. And they can be either glossy and quartz. And this usually do not react with acids. So next is the sedimentary rock, which is largely found on the Earth's surface and they cover 75% area of the Earth. And these rocks are generally not crystalline in nature. They are soft and have many layers as they are formed due to the deposition of sediments. And last but not the least, it is the metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks were once igneous or sedimentary rocks but have been changed as a result of intense heat and or pressure within the earth 
crust and they are crystalline and often have a squash or foliated or bonded texture. So on your understanding, what is weathering and why does it happen? So weathering, it is a breaking down or dissolving of rocks and minerals on the surface of the earth. And this weathering, once a rock and has been broken down, a process called erosion transports the bit of rocks and mineral away. Water, ice, acid, salts, plants, animals, and changes in temperature are all agents of weathering. And there are two types of weathering. And these are the two types of weathering, which is the mechanical weathering that refers to a physical weathering and disagregation causes rocks to crumble. And it breaks rocks into smaller pieces and their composition does not change. So this mechanical weathering is the physical breakup of rocks into smaller particles without a change in the chemical composition of the constituent minerals. While the chemical weathering, it involves the interaction of rock with mineral solutions and change the composition of rocks. And it occurs when water dissolves mineral in rock, producing new compounds. So this chemical weathering is caused by rainwater reacting with the mineral grains in rocks to form new minerals and soluble salts. So let's move on to the geological hazards and what are the importance of it. So geological hazard is an extreme natural event in the crust of earth that poses a threat to life and property. It is a geohazard is an adverse geologic condition capable of causing widespread damage or loss of property and life. And these hazards are geological and environmental conditions and involve long-term or short-term geological processes. So here are some the examples of geological hazards. So first is the earthquake. Earthquake is a sudden movement in the earth crust that occurs along the fault. It is a weak to violent shaking of the ground produced by the sudden movement of the rock materials below the earth's surface. So, causes of earthquake or induced earthquake, induced quakes are costly by human activity like tunnel construction, filing reservoirs, and implementing geothermal or fracking projects. And also the volcanic earthquake. Volcanic quakes are associated with active volcanisms with collapsed earthquakes. So next example is the volcanoes. It is an intense, surprise emotion or situation liable to burst out suddenly. It is a rupture in the earth's crust which allows lava, ash, and gases to escape when magma rises to the surface. So these volcanoes um, they ultimately break down and water to form some of the most fertile soils on earth, cultivation of which has produced abundant food and fostered civilizations. And last example is the landslides. It is a movement of a mass of rocks, debris, or earth down a slope, and they can accompany heavy rains or follow droughts, earthquake, or volcanic eruption. Inside of my topic is that the geology is important because it includes energy sources and sustainability, climate change, the impacts of development on the environment, water management, mineral resources, and natural hazards. And also, through studying rocks, the geochemistry and geobiology, we can understand how the earth has changed through time, and we can also understand how the earth may change in the future, for example, through the erosion and the development of new mountains. And while for the earth resources that provide us with everything we need to grow food and live um, healthy lives in the form of natural resources, and these resources are land, water, animals, and plants. And to conclude all the natural resources used by humans to Two stands out a, as having the biggest impact on human survival and environmental quality and the mineral and fossil fuels resources are largely responsible for moving human civilization from hunter-gatherer societies to heavily industrialized urban ones. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you learned something today. And have a good day. Goodbye.